Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. June Lundgren, welcome again to Coast to Coast AM. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Good to be here again. Well, I'm happy that you found a little bit of time in between all of your demon destroying and nursing. What's tell me a little bit about that nursing because I know you are constantly working. Yeah, I, I work in internal medicine now, but I've worked in medicine for almost 48 years now. It's, I'm working in a clinic setting instead of a hospital setting, which is where I started out and. I got my training in the military, so it's ah. been a while since '76. And which which uh, which uh, service? Army, Navy, Air Force. Oh, I, I spent. I started out spending two years in the Army. At that time, there were two-year enlistments, and then I switched from Army to Air Force to get some more training for EMT, emergency medical tech. So I've been doing, I did that for five years. That was, that was quite enough. <laughs> yeah. How much does all of uh, your abilities make a difference in, in your nursing? It makes quite a difference because I can, when I was working hospital work, I could see if there was an attachment or if there was a loved one that was with them. And a lot of times the loved one would tell me things that the patient wouldn't tell the doctor or anybody else. So it oh. gave me some insight. You know, like a lot of times patients won't tell you the whole story about right. how something happened or, or how they're feeling. And usually it's the loved one that says, well, you now this is really how she's feeling. This is what really happened. Which that helps me to give the doctor a little heads up. Not that he, and, not that he knows how it, ha how I got. Okay, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to. You knew what I was thinking to ask you. <laughs> yeah, because you know they're men of science. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, has any of them ever known that this is how you get some of the information, and they're okay with it? I worked for one doctor who was who was very much. He was Advent. He was an Adventist practicing Adventist, and he, the first time I told him, you know, uh, he is the head doctor for like 10 different care facilities, and the first time I told him one of his patients was going to die, he's like, yeah, right, whatever, and the patient died. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh. <laughs> and he's like, don't tell me, I don't want to know. <laughs> After a couple of times, and, and it happened, he's like, don't tell me, I don't want to know. I'm like, okay. Mm. You know, you just think people would just learn from that and listen and be open to that, even when they see it. Oh, you know. Yeah. What, they don't, what do they, you do? A lot of people don't want to know about anything. You know, they. that's why it, it, people say, well, don't you just go to people without, you know, if you're with somebody or, or you see somebody, don't you just stop them and tell them whatever? I'm like, no. I said, because not everyone is open to it. You know, a lot yeah. of people don't either don't believe or don't want to know about anything like if if their grandmother has a message for them a lot of them don't want to even know that they're dead they're gone that's it End of wow I, you know i'm always interested in it but yeah you uh you know a lot of times you want to find something one thing out and then all these other things come in you're like no i don't care don't waste my time i've got an hour here at 35 bucks <laughs> you know stop yeah, right, right. <laughs> quit tell tell grandma to be quiet right. <laughs> i'm trying to I, talk, I to, talk uncle to grandma Jeff. i want to talk to grandma yeah okay all right <laughs> well uncle ted doesn't want to talk to you <laughs> only no, grandma sorry. or you'll have Darn some time so they'll come to connect with 
one person in particular, and that one person doesn't have anything to say, or <laughs> they've been reborn already, then then it's like, uh, sorry, but oh. they have nothing to say, or they've just been reborn, or whatever, you know, and they don't want to hear that either because they want to hear they want to talk to them. Oh well, they're now your great grandchild. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or they'll say, "I never knew, I never knew my parents, or I never knew my mother or father." I'm like, it doesn't make any difference. I said because, you know, I had one gentleman. The father died at, at three years old. I said it doesn't matter that that he died when you were three. I said he stays with you and watches. I said he sees everything that you're, you've accomplished and, you know, the problems you're having or whatever. He has advice for you. you know, but, or you'll have somebody that's adopted, and, of course, they never knew their real parents. But it doesn't make any difference on the other side. Well, when they come up, when they say, when they have messages, are they always just unbelievable, like outstanding, godlike messages? Are the or... Do you also sometimes they they want to send like a message that's like a joke or something silly? A lot of times it's it's not really godlike messages like everything's okay over here, don't worry about it. No, they don't. A lot of times it's like you know I know you're going through this, and this is my advice to you, or you have this coming up, or you know I lo- I lost my ruby ring, and I can tell you now where it is. You know. Go find it. <laughs> mm. You know, it's just simple things. It's what the person needs to hear because usually if someone comes and they want to contact an individual, it's for a specific reason in mind. And they will they know what the reason is, and they'll respond to that. And a lot of times they'll have, they'll have something that they want to know but don't want anybody to know that they want to know it, so to speak. So the uh, spirit will come through and say, well, you know, this is what's going on. Or they'll give me a, sometimes I'll get cryptic messages. I'm like, I don't know what this means, but you, you'll, if you don't know what it means right now, you soon will. And nine times out of 10, the person will say, well, I don't know what that's about. And then I get an email saying, oh, you know, I remembered what it was about or, or I found out what what it was about. And do you I, then write them back and say, well, I've already talked to 20 other people. I don't know what you're talking about anymore. No, no. I'm I sorry. Usually remember. <laughs> yeah, I usually remember because people are just that's good. always something about each person that's <laughs> memorable. Okay. You know I'm kidding. Um, I, I hope so. But Okay, so um, – I love what we're going to talk about today, but I know that usually you're talking about being the demon seer. So let's definitely throw that out there and talk about that a little bit for people that have not met you or know who you are, which I think once anybody sees your picture, they'll go, oh, I've seen June. Because you've done, you've done a lot of shows, right? Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of shows, and I've been on Ghost Adventures, and yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> that one, that's where they lock themselves up, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overnight, yeah, yeah. Constant clearing of them, right? Uh, yeah, and <laughs> not even going there with that one. <laughs> yeah, right, I get it. It's like, wait a minute, I just cleared you. Quit and going on doing it again. door, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so as a demon seer, you you have the gift of being able to take off anything demonic, negative, whatsoever, like at the blink of an eye. Yeah, it it depends. It's I think the longest it's taken me has been three hours, but that was a possession case with a woman that had eleven entities. So that one's that's the longest. But it usually just takes a, a few minutes, as long as I have a picture of either a location or an individual. I can do it from a distance. It doesn't take long because once I see the picture and make the connection then I know what the demon is doing to the individual and where it attached and how long it's been attached to them and what it wants. So I usually will just, I don't really like to talk to them that much because they really have nothing to say that I want to hear, you know, so you really can't get anything. 
good out of them all. They're always nasty. They're they're never nice, you know. It's like, okay, fine. I don't want to hear you anyway, so I'll just take you out anyway. And I know that you've described so many different ones. I know one time you had described to me like these little spidery little things that are like in your in people's heads. Yeah, they have like um the demons sometimes will uh they w- there are a certain types of uh, demons. One of them is a minion. I call, I call it a creepy crawly because it can be, it can look like anything. It can look like a spider. It can look like a bug. It can look like a dog. It can look like anything. But they can shrink themselves down. And uh, a lot of times people won't even know they're there. If you don't know what you're looking for, you won't find them. They're kind of like a trapdoor spider where a trapdoor spider will spin a web and then it'll have a pocket in the center that it hides under in the pocket, under the web in the pocket, and it'll pop up when its victim is there. So these things kind of hide in the brain, and they, they'll they pull the basically pull the brain in after them. So if you didn't know what you were looking for, you'd never find them. And they um, influence the individual person. They influence. They're bad. Woo. Wow. I'm telling you, she's got some great stuff. Right before we took that break there june you were talking about the little the little like spidery like ones and the ones that hidden in the brain could you just fit i, I just want to make sure i i just thought that was just so intriguing and interesting that uh what it did so i know you said most of it but can you just say again what they do inside the the brain well they they go inside the brain and they hide themselves and they control and manipulate they do things like they'll give you bouts of anger, depression. They'll make you do things you normally would not do. You know, like if you're if you're a very uh, um, if you're a very good driver and you always obey the speed limits and things like that, they could you know make you drive 90 miles an hour in a 20 mile an hour zone, and you don't even realize you're doing it. You know. Most people don't even realize that they have anything wrong. But things start to go wrong in their life. They start having health issues. They may lose their job. Finances will go in the toilet. Anything like that that can cause harm to you in one way or another. Now, I know that you are as simple as this. Like, like um, okay, everyone, let's say that I needed to call her and say, look, something's not right. I don't know what it is. And I'd have June on the phone. I've seen her do this stuff. It's amazing. So it's like I'd have June on the phone. And um, let's say let's say it's something with me. I could call her and say, I don't know what's going on, but this is happening, this is happening. And she would just be on the other line, and she would, you would just look, June, right? You just look at me right now, and you say, oh, I just flicked one off. I just did this, and I just did that. Yeah. And I can feel good instantly. I can feel yeah. better instantly. Yeah, you just have that. Con- I just have that connection. Once I make the connection, it's either you know. Sometimes it's by email. Sometimes it's by phone. But as long as I get a picture or something to do with the individual involved or the location involved, <clears throat> a lot of times people will contact me because they're having you know paranormal activity that's actually you know if they're being attacked or bit bitten or scratched or whatever then they'll send me a picture of the location and i can see what's there and remove it now you are a demon seer what's the difference between that and a demonologist Uh, okay so a, a demonologist is someone who studies demonology studies you know everything that it the person says everything they can about whatever's been written, and they'll they may go out to a location. They also study. Most of them will also study theology, so they'll go out to a location and try to rid it of you know something anything that's negative that's there. And that's that's cool because that's that's what they do. But I've run into a lot of people that say they're demonologists and they were ended up being fake. So that kind of put me off when I started doing removals, you know, putting myself out there to help. 
I told my grandmother, I said, listen, you know, I don't want to call myself a demonologist because that's not what I am. And she she had been gone, she'd been dead since 1979. And uh, she said, well, why don't you just call yourself what we call you in the old country? And she's from Ireland, uh, a demon seer. She, mm. said there was, she said there's a, a family history from the 14th century that said a child, female child would be born and she would have the ability to see, communicate, and remove demonic entities. And she says, "That's I knew that the moment I saw you, that that's who you were. You were the fulfillment of that prophecy. So I actually see the demons in their true form. I actually talk to them at times, and I can actually remove them and kill them. Demonologists can't do any of that. They don't see the demons. Most of them do not see the demons, especially not in their true form, and they can't kill them. Ha. Okay, so, and, and I, I want to get to the warrior angels, but what does a demon look like? What do you see? Are they what, because I know what I imagine, I know what I've seen in the movies and the TV shows, but what, what do they really look like? Well, the demon will actually show itself. It'll di- go into your mind, and they'll dig out your preconceived idea, mm. image of what they should look like, and they'll magnify that a hundredfold and make you see them as that. But that's not really what they look like. Demons, you know, like the old demons, are about seven feet tall. They look a lot like archangels in the way that they're both seven feet tall. They have a 12-foot wingspan, uh, and that's where the the similarities end. They're also shades of grays and black, and their face has almost no features whatsoever. What really stands out are the eyes. Eyes on an old demon are golden, or some people call it yellow. But they, when you look at the eyes, you see every evil that you've ever thought of, mm. and then some. It's pure evil when you look in their eyes, and it's something that you will never, ever forget. You'll have nightmares for years to come from it. But And then the ones that are the lesser demons and the minions, they have red eyes. But it's much the same in the way that... That's what, you know, that's what you see. That's what you feel. Do you have nightmares? No, because I've been seeing them since I was five. Did you have them when you were five? No, funny enough, I didn't. <laughs> you pre- <laughs> Not about no. one and a half. It, 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 you know, that's when it, it changed how I saw them. Because before that, mm-hmm. I just saw them as a black mass, you know, or a black humanoid shape. But when I turned about four and a half, well, my brain was developed enough to actually see them as they are, I was scared. And Michael was with me. He said, don't be afraid. He said, you're seeing them through the eyes of an angel. You see them as we see them in their true form. He said, never be afraid of them because that's a weakness and they'll take advantage of it. So and- I learned a long time ago not to, not to worry about it, not to be afraid of them. And when you said, Michael, tell people about your oh, your best yeah, friend. Michael, Michael the Archangel, yeah. Y'all are like buddy-buddy, you talk yeah, often. He's been with me since birth, so <laughs> uh, so it's it's normal for me, you know. When I was growing up, I thought that everybody could, everybody had those kind of friends, but I soon learned they didn't. So you call upon him and others a lot to help you. Yeah, there's, um, when I died in a motorcycle accident that when, uh, in 1988, um, I went to the other side. Uh, I died, went to the other side. I was chronically dead for two minutes. And Michael was there. He says, you need to understand who and what you are. That's why you're here now. You're here because you need to understand that your, your body was created to hold the soul of Ariel the Archangel. She's not just an archangel. She's a demon slayer. He said, you have to go back and start doing the work you're always meant to do, and that's removing demons, you know, helping the living with problems of demonic possession, you know, demonic influence, anything to do with negative entities. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) You didn't give me a manual for this one. (laughs) 
<laughs> Did you say, look, can't I be a multi-trillionaire and do whatever I want? Please, please, please. I know. Yeah, it's like, can you give me something airy-fairy? How come you have the bad stuff? <laughs> just Go out here and, and fight you demons. Gotta, you got to do it, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. You're a really good friend. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when you say... Um, you kill them. How, how is it that you kill them? You have to realize that uh, demons as well as angels exist on a completely different uh, realm of existence. And in their world, as, uh, as a dark and light world, thought becomes reality. And it's the intention behind the thought that gives it power. When I kill a demon, I fight it in a different realm of existence, a realm of pure energy to where Ariel comes forward and she helps, basically helps to slay the demon. People see, when I do do a removal, people say that they see wings coming out of my shoulders, my eyes turn white, and my face and my voice changes. So there are physical manifestations of her and we're, we're one. We're not two separate entities per se. I couldn't exist without my soul, and she is my soul. So Michael did a merge when this, when all this happened. He called it a merge, so that I can hear what she hears, see what she sees, and feel what she feels, and vice versa. So essentially, we're one unit, one being. And. Well, when you slay one, I mean, it's, I guess I'm asking you that because it's like, okay, when you say slay, I'm thinking of, of a big sword going into them, uh -huh. but they're on this yeah. whole different thing. Yeah. Is it, but, but I've also heard you say, I have flicked, I've flicked this off of someone. I just like flicked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, you know, it's usually, she, she has two white light swords and when she fights a demon, it's old school. It's not like you have a gun or anything like that. It's a hand-to-hand -hand combat, so to speak, you know, with swords. The demons have dark swords. The bringers of light, the archangels, have uh, swords of white light. And once you slice through them, they disintegrate, and they basically turn into particles. And I see the particles go into space and just dissipate. When we die, we can come back again. When a demon dies... Its consciousness is gone. It can never return. It's dead, dead. Where are they coming from? Who's who's uh you know you know bringing these things into life here? What who's who's running around that need Viag? Well, they don't need that. They need something else. <laughs> what what? How are they born? Where do they come from? Well, we they weren't always dark. At one time, you know, we were all white light beings. We existed on another planet. You know, billions of years ago. And that's where God found us, and he decided to help us, you know, evolve, help us to become better. We were a very primitive race, and he helped us get rid of war and famine and disease. And over time, we evolved into pure energy. And once everyone evolved into pure energy, we traveled as a group, and to see different galaxies, you know, we saw stars being born, planets dying, stars dying, you know, black holes, everything. We traveled like that for hundreds of thousands of years. And till some of the people, some of the souls said, you know what, we'd like to be physical again. We'd like to have, you know, children. We'd like to know physical love. We'd like to grow old, things like that. But there came a faction that decided, no, 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 we don't want to do that. This is not what we want. There's no way we're going to do that. So that Lucifer was the leader, and they rose up against uh, the warrior angels and the Legion of Light. The Legion of Light was created by God before this, before this war, because he knew it wouldn't be long before Lucifer would, you know, show his true colors. So he created them. It's made up of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Ariel. And they are in charge, and they train all the warrior angels. So, you know, when all this happened, L Lucifer was disarmed by 
Michael and his son was disarmed by Ariel. And God told him, okay, you know, you can't live among us because you'll cause more problems. So he opened a rift into a dark realm, and he put them in there and said, this is your realm from now on. This is where you'll rule. And he sealed the rift. And then living in the dark that long, they became a part of the darkness. So that's why they look the way they are, and that's why they can never go into the light. So they've made it their agenda to cause as much pain and suffering to mankind as they possibly can because each person that lives has a white light soul. Mm. And you knew this since you were five years old? Yeah, I was born with the knowledge. Wow, amazing. So just real quickly before we take a break, you have many books and many links. I want to make sure we get to the right links because we know, <laughs> did we want to go with demonseer.com or mysticconnections.org? I guess they take us to the same place. Yeah, um, usually um, demonseer.com, it'll bring you right to the same place. It, one one will direct right into the other, into mystic connections. It's, it's all one. And that's where you've got books and you've that's, got... Yeah, I've got books. I've got a contact page for people to connect with me. I do intuitive readings as well. And you can book a reading uh, with me as well. But it's, it's, it's got, I have a group, called, a paranormal group called Ghosts and Girls Paranormal. You can also contact us through that as well as Facebook June Lundgren on, under Facebook or Ghosts and Girls Facebook. You can find. So they can, okay. So readings and also taking away demons, mm -hmm. any situations like that, let you know about that. Yeah, and, and black salt. I, I make a black salt that's, that was created, uh, given the recipe was given to me by God, and I created this black salt that protects against negative entities. Ooh, June Lundgren is who we're talking with, mysticconnections.org, demonseer.com. Get you there. You can learn all about her, see how you can contact her, and especially if you need help instantly. So, June, we we um, pretty much caught up. Yeah, I mean, there's no way we can catch up with all of the stuff that you've done, but Warrior Angels, you had said at one point, actually, and I thought it was really cool, you said, you're a warrior angel. And I said, well, what is a warrior angel? And you went on, it was wonderful, and it was like, that's what we got to do a show on. So we will be taking calls this hour, but please tell us, tell us about the warrior angels. And I think there's only so many in the world. Yeah, right now, there are uh, about... 30,000 warrior angels in physical form that are being reborn into the physical. And there are over 300,000 of them that are in spirit form uh, walking the earth. They're here to protect us, the human race, against the negative entities to fight them. And each warrior angel has been trained by the Legion of Light. And they're the they're the ones that train them. They're all warriors, but kind of like the military, you know, you have like in the infantry, you have the people that you know that do the um, the logistics. You know, they have ones that that are on the front line. They have ones that do communication. It's like that with warrior angels. They each one has its own specialty, and there are the the warrior warrior angels they're the ones that do the fighting of the demons and then there are the ones that are communicators the ones that are facilitators strategists they have uh, healers as well it depends upon their specialty uh, which you know which division they belong to but each one of them can and will fight against the darkness but they're sent back here to see what's going on, to be able to live in the physical world so that they can understand better how the physical people are affected by these negative entities and what ways they can help and 
once they cross back into the other side, they bring all that information as well to God and Jesus and and uh, the other warrior angels because there's such a gap on the other side. They don't understand the physical world because they don't have the problems we have. They don't have the hassles that we have. So it's hard for them to understand. It'd be like, and their sense of time is, is horrible. I mean, it'd be like you being on one side of the Grand Canyon and me being on the other side. You know there's somebody over there. You don't know who it is, and you can't hear what they're saying. You can just see somebody over there, and so you you have no idea. And it's about that way with them on the other side. You know, the archangels, they they can see you. They know who you are, but they don't know that, say, you had a bad day at work or you broke your foot. Or something like that. They they know the they they know that you broke the foot. They don't know the pain involved with it. You know what you have to do to protect that foot, to wear a cast or whatever. It's it's the nuances that they don't understand. So you had said I was a warrior angel. Right, you're a warrior angel, but your specialty is communication. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Go figure. <laughs> I love All it. All about communication. <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually when they're reborn, they will have some. They'll have some sort of a job or some sort of a um, life path that includes their specialty. So it's 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 interesting. Um, in the last three or four years, I've had about a thousand warrior angels find me and. They come, and they want to know why they're having issues. Like, warrior angels have uh, more abilities than most people do. Your regular everyday angels, I I call them common angels because they're the everyday angels. But I know some people find that derogatory, but really, no, they're the worker bees. Um, the, the common angels may have, you know, one gift or two gifts, but the warrior angels have multiple gifts. They may have they may have psychic abilities. They may be able to do psychometry. They may be have empathic abilities. Uh, you know, each one of them is a little bit different. Some may be healers. Some may be able to. Some are mediums. It just depends upon the individual one, and not and most. Warrior angels are not born with the with the knowledge of who and what they are. They know they're different. They know there's something different about them. They know they have abilities, but they don't know a lot of times how to utilize those abilities to the fullest, or they don't understand why they have the abilities and what their life path is, that sort of thing. It's very difficult for them to adjust, and most of the time they don't come to find out who and what they are until you know they're in midlife. Very rarely are they born with the abilities, I mean with the knowledge. It's a rarity. I was born with the knowledge, but that's because Ariel's an archangel, and each time she incarnates, she's she's a uh, got all of her abilities, and she's born with the knowledge of what she is. Mm. So many of those things hit home. So it's interesting that when you say that and then you start describing those things, it's like, yeah, and I, and I think I might be one of those ones that come back and tell them, you know, on the other side, hey, this this is what the pain is like. <laughs> here, yeah. here, Here's the pain. Let's, it's like, get you don't need to Let have feel this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man, what, what did... What did I do to deserve this? Um, yeah. Ariel, when she goes dumb. back, she tries to let them feel the emotions and the things that she went through in that particular lifetime so that they can understand better. Good and bad, right? Good yeah, and bad both. feelings. Yeah, both things, yeah. Yeah, and I, did you say something like fight? it's always fighting for love, knowing that love is the only thing and, and that's what the warrior angels are doing? Yeah, warrior, you know, love is, is one of the strongest emotions that there is for good. But to hate is one of the strongest emotions for bad. 
but I, you know the on the other side when you go when I died I went to the other side the first thing you feel is the overwhelming sense of peace and love mm-hmm. and security and that sticks out like anything and you're when you're on the other side you're connected to every living soul every soul in existence whether it's living or on the other side it's kind of like it's a murmur in the background you hear all these voices if you concentrate on one voice or another then you can then that one becomes louder and clearer but of above all that is the what some people call the god consciousness you can feel him in constantly in the background and your connection to him you can feel that connection you had said um like i don't know i get it's not just you everybody seems to be saying in whatever field or genre they're in that something is happening right now that things are going on the in the world right now and and we're getting ready what do you what do you say about that and what do you what do you think yeah, there's um, a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that most people don't know about. And over the last several years, I've had, you know, more and more battles against the dark ones. And the battles have gotten more and more intense and more often. And there was a, there was a session where, with God, where He decided to, you know, do a, a massive clearing of negative entities. And that was like the end of December. And starting the first part, the first of January, the energy changed after that. The energy changed for the better. And things are starting to move in the right direction. A couple of years ago, God had said that there told me there was going to be what he called the Great Conjunction, where everything came together and the change would occur on the earth and it would start with an energetic change for the better for good so that's what we're seeing begin now june lundgren you can uh, find her at mysticconnections.org demonseer.com whichever one's easier for you to look up (laughs) we were going to pick one and just keep giving you that but i just want you to remember one mysticconnections.org or demonseer and that's a D E M O N S E E R dot com. We're going to hit the phones here. Beth, a wild card line number two out of Palo Alto, California. Is it Palo? It's Palo Alto. What, how do you say that? Palo Alto. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> You're in, I know that area. I was looking around for places there, thinking to live there at one point. Woo. That's some expensive living over there. So, uh, uh, got a lot of great minds over there, too, don't you? Anyway, welcome to Coast to Coast. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I, I like what June's saying. It makes a lot of sense. Um, now, how would you find out about, how do you recognize um, warrior angels or any angels that are incarnated now? Uh, for me, it's it's not, it's not, uh a problem because with Ariel within me, I can see an angel in an individual simply by seeing them. It's it's hard to describe. I just I can see the angelic energy. Angels look at us and they don't see the physical body; they see the soul within, the angelic soul within, or the or the common angel soul within. They see that. They don't see this physical uh, shell that you see, that you and I see. So I can see the, I can see their energy, and I know that whether they are or not, and then I know their name. So, so Beth could actually, who, by the way, she's from Cal, it says from California, but she had, she had a Canadian. She had a Canadian uh, accent there. <laughs> I wonder if that's where she's from. I think we've already, uh, she's not, not on the line anymore. But so Beth could also contact you. And yeah, if she's, yeah, she can, if she yeah. had pictures of her yeah. aunt or something, she could say, is this a warrior angel or something? Right, like? right. And what is, what is their name? You know, sometimes it, it's, you'll have a female body, but you'll have a male 
per se, male warrior angel. Mm, it doesn't, good question. doesn't make any difference to them. Elise, wildcard line number one, Portland, Oregon. Welcome to Coast. You're on the air. Hi, Connie. Hey. Um, my question for the guest was, do you have to get into, like, a meditative state or any any type of, like, um, uh, st- any any sort of um, things that you do in order to see the, the demon seers? And what would your advice be for someone who's been being followed for about four years that can't seem to shake one that's just doing unspeakable things I won't even mention for the empaths to have to have nightmares about? Well, stay on the line, Elise, because she can connect with you immediately. Hold on. Stay right there. <laughs> Don't go. Go ahead, June. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um no, I don't have to go into a meditative state. That's that's actually a redundance for me. I don't to be in a meditative state would leave yourself open to these things and open to attack. So I don't I don't have to be. I just know from seeing the individual and or hearing the individual what's there. Are you able to pick up on her right now? Oh yeah. Can you? Is it already gone? <laughs> it's it's trying to hide, but if she can send a picture to me through my website, then I can I can do the removal. Did you hear that, Elise? A picture of me. Yeah, you or yeah. if it's a, if you feel that it's a a place, then the picture of the outs a picture of oh, outside of the yeah, building. No, it's not a place. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can do a picture right. of myself. Yeah. Yeah, a picture of whoever's having the issue. That would be me. Thank you, June. All right. All right. Yeah, make sure you do that, Elise. It'll boom, boom. So so where would she contact you through the Mystic Connections? To, yeah, she can go to demonseer.com, and there's a contact page, and you just send the information, and there's an email address in there as well. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. And, Elise, hopefully, uh, I, I, look, It'll be taken care of. There's no question. I've seen it myself. It's absolutely amazing. So if you're uh, in that same situation, demonseer.com. Connie Willis here along with June Lundgren and talking about warrior angels. <laughs> it's amazing to me what you can do. You really, you really are. You know, I know you've gone through this for a, a long, long time, but, you know, doing what I do, I meet a lot of people. And a lot of people say a lot of things, and some can do and some cannot, and you can do. You yeah, can do. I, yeah, I don't, you know, if, if I, nobody would pick this job. Nobody in no. I would, would want to do this job. Because, you know, you see and hear about people that are demonologists, true demonologists, and they have a lot of health issues and things like that, because it does take a toll on people, you know, that do the work. I don't have any issues. The only reason that is because, you know, if I didn't have Ariel within me, I'd probably have some issues. But I'm I'm pretty healthy. I only take vitamins. I just have my physical. They said, you're you're great shape for the shape you're in. I said, Chet. <laughs> <laughs> so you just you got a new book coming out, or it is out? And look at all these um, books you do. What's that about? Yeah. In the next 72 hours, the ebook should be available for the, my new book called, it's the second in the Demon Seeker series. It's, called, it's a fantasy book based on the seven archangels that are in the world today. Um, this one's called Demon Seekers Into Darkness. It should be out by the end of the week in uh, print, but it'll be out in 72 hours as ebook on Amazon. Excellent. So where do they go to find that? Yeah, they can go on Amazon.com and just type in my name and all the books will pop up. Okay, okay. And plus they can probably go to just demonseer.com and and hit it too. Yeah. Mystics Connection. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, it's June, J-U-N-E, Lundgren, L-U-N-D-G-R-E-N. Yeah, it's not like it's a little easy. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, sometimes you're like, man, why do I have this name? Like, nobody can spell it, right? Yours isn't Uh, that bad, but it's got a little twist in there, you know. Well, it's like my husband's 
second cousin is Dolph Lundgren. So, oh, you know, if, you, if you just figure that guy, then you'll know. Oh, okay, okay. I'm glad I got a Willis. That's a little easier. <laughs> yeah, that's so, simpler. It's it is. My maiden name. My maiden name is Greek, so that would be even what, harder. What? What? What is it? It's Kalouris. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even with little, the accent. A little harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little harder. And you gotta you gotta spell it out with that accent too. Amazing. So let me ask you this, and we'll hit the the phone calls here. Uh, demons, aliens, same things or different? Yeah, you be you can't imagine how many times I get people asking me that. They're not the same. Although, like I said, if a demon looks into your mind and and you think it th- you think your idea of a demon is an alien, then that's what they're going to show themselves as. Mm-hmm. But you can always tell what it is by looking at the eyes, because no matter what form they take in your mind, the eyes are always the dead giveaway. They're always the same. You know, the, the golden eyes for the old demons, and the red ones for the minions and the lesser demons. So you can't hide those, no matter what. But also, not just the color, but when you look in, you just know oh, yeah. Yeah, the negativeness. Yeah, glance at them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get that evil that evil stuff. You just don't want to stare into them for any length of time. That's interesting that you say that because, um, like, when I've done the Bigfooting and I will mind speak to say, look, I want to see you, but I don't want to see your eyes yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, it's true with just people in general, too, when you look in their eyes, you know, and I I do have something where man, I can really see in people's eyes. Maybe that's the warrior angel yeah, thing that you yeah, talk that's, about. Yeah, that's a warrior, and I'm, warrior angel trait. So why maybe something has gotten me in a way of I don't want to look in your eyes yet. I'm just not ready to see the whole world and truth of it when I do. Is that what you think it is? Because I don't think they're demonic at all. But no, it, it, but but it's the case of sometimes we block ourselves because we don't we're not ready for it you know we're yeah not ready to see what it truly is it's going to be amazing it'll be amazing when i do and i just want to be ready you know exactly and if you're not ready you know you're you'll be blind to it so yeah yeah i know what i see when that happens one day will be so much yeah that I, and I think it'll be absolutely amazing. So I just totally want to totally be ready. Um, going back to the lines, man, do, do you want to say, I just want to ask since it's our last segment and we're going to hit the phones, is there anything else you want to make sure that you say before uh, I don't rush you into it at the end because um, we're running out of time? I guess the best the best advice I can give people if they think, you know, if they interact, if they've, come across a negative entity is not to acknowledge it because if you acknowledge it it's you it makes you it makes them see you <clears throat> it's like raising your hand in a classroom you know nobody wants to raise their hand in a classroom because the teacher's gonna gonna pick on you but uh it's the same way once you acknowledge it then it makes if you're normally you'd be a part of the crowd but the minute you say, is that a demon or do I think I saw a shadow person or whatever, then they turn and they look at you and they see you and they may attach themselves to you. And I think that's the last thing you really want. Rick, wild card line number one from New Lebanon, New York. Oh, he will refresh this. Sorry. Woo! Jade, wild card line number two out of Lake Tahoe, where there's, I think, a whole lot of snow there. Welcome to Coast to Coast. Okay. Yeah, we got 30 feet of snow. Woo! Deep, deep. deep. Woo! <laughs> Beautiful. We're shoveling out. Shoveling <laughs> out. Do you have a Thank question you. for June? Yes, I do. And Connie and June, I am so grateful for you guys being here. Like, the Art Bell and the George Norrie, you guys are rock stars keeping the, like, we're coast to coast. We're here. It's it's um, January 2023. Like, here we are. So my question is, Thank you. Regular, regular little people, we're just trying to shovel out snow. 
We're just trying to think about good and evil. Well, we want to be good. We don't want to, like, the evil, what what can we do? Pray over the evil, whatever. Should we, you know, ask, what do we need to do? Because there's a lot of things going on on this planet. It's been going on for decades, millennium. And I just want to know if, if these... I, I am so great that June talked about 300,000 are angels helping Warrior us. Angels. Uh-huh. Warrior Please, angels. thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm like, wait a minute, that's 300,000 angels that can help us shovel the snow out of the deep Sierra mountains. Yeah, they, and, it's and, like God, and, you know, people think God doesn't hear them, but he, he hears them. That's why he sent them. And that's why he sent 30,000 warrior angels into physical, into the physical world and their bodies, physical bodies being reborn. Because he knows man needs help. Terry, wild card line number four, Columbus, Ohio. Terry, welcome to Coast to Coast. You have a question real quick. Oh, uh, yes. Hi, Connie. Hi, June. Happy New Year Hi. to both of you. Thank you. You too. Um, I was just wondering what role the Christians play. And can, can they be demonized, and what can the Holy Spirit do for you? I have a lot of mental health problems and from drug and alcohol abuse, and I've been clean and sober for about five years now. Awesome. But I have I'm, I seem to be pretty stuck in my spiritual relationship, and just wondering how to get going again. Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people think that it's hard. You know, we humans, we make things harder than it has to be. And I remember years ago, God telling me, he says, you humans make things harder than they have to be. All you have to do is ask, and we'll help. He says, you may not have, we give you the help you need. He says, not necessarily the help you want. We give you the help you need to help you grow spiritually. So all you have to do is ask. So that uh, works for the same answer for Jade out in Lake Tahoe and 30 feet of snow. They got 30 feet of snow out there. (laughs) Thanks. I don't like the cold. It snowed for about a half an hour here. That was enough. (laughs) Love it, love it, love it. So beautiful. Don't like driving in it, but, man, is it beautiful. Not that you can drive through 30 feet, but, oh, my. Well, June, I thank you so much for being here. It's so fun to talk with you anytime. It's it's hard to because you are a busy lady. If you're not working at, in the nursing field, you're certainly doing this. But I think you're hoping to retire from that and and do this a little bit more. Is that uh, what what you yeah, predict? I supposed, yeah, I was supposed to retire in in uh, Thursday, but they found nobody to replace me. So I told them I'd give them two and a half days a week, and that's it. But towards November, when it reaches November, they better find somebody right in because I'm out of there. Do nobody can replace you. There's just absolutely no way. So just real quick, how can people reach you again, and what is it that you would like them to make sure they check out? Yeah, you can go to demonseer.com. It feeds into mysticconnections.org, so they're one and the same. So go to demonseer.com, and you know, there's on the contact page. You can send a, send me a, a question, or if you need an appointment for an intuitive reading, there's an appointment page, so you can book an appointment with me. Um, you can go to Facebook, June Lundgren on Facebook. Uh, I have a paranormal group called Ghosts and Girls Paranormal. But and if you want any of my books, you can get them on Amazon.com. Just and if someone... Name, they'll all pop up. <laughs> okay, yeah, put up her name and it'll all pop up. It's true, it's true. And if somebody has an emergency, is there a certain way to catch you for for an emergency? Um, I, usually, I usually will respond to emails within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, okay. Excellent. June, thanks so much. Looking forward to talking to you again. June right, Lundgren. Care. Thanks for having me. Will do. Absolutely. Thanks, June. We'll have. She's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, I've just seen her doing some work for some other people, and and I could not believe what I saw, and I couldn't wait to get her on the air at one point. 
Um, but I couldn't because at one point, George Norrie had already talked to her just recently. I was like, darn it, I got to wait. <laughs> you got to give a little bit of time. You know, you just got to do those things. So thanks again, June, for being here and all of those of you that called. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.